building church. Mm -hmm. Talmadge Memorial, fourth reformed uh, Talmadge Memorial Church, I guess, on my health day. And uh, I even had opportunity on occasion to preach in this church before it was, became Journey's Way. Okay, uh, let's take a look at, uh, I'm, I'm dealing with a number of homes, and you might be curious about the uh, trolley picture. That's my sister that was the artist that drew that picture. Based on research and information that I had received about colors and how many windows, uh, and so on and so forth, we're connected with the Wichita Electric Railway Company. Now, some of you might say, were there really trolleys <clears throat> in Roxborough and Manning, and the answer is yes. In fact, here is a picture, an old picture, uh, on Lyceum, looking toward Ridge, and you can see the trolley tracks. Under, uh, you know, it's covered now, you can't see it today, but uh, whether they were removed, my guess is that they're probably still there, and the McAdam is on top of them. So, uh, there's one uh, evidence. This is inside the uh, uh, <clears throat> railway plant station of Wissahickon Electric Passenger Railway Company. And I think it is very possible that the, the, the uh, person who was the first owner of our house, which is right on the corner of Green Lane and Manioc, he may actually be in that picture, right in the center, uh, sitting on a chair. He was the uh, vice president of that company, and the second owner of our house was the president at the, at the beginning. We're talking 1894, 1898, 96 at, at the uh, time frame. Now, in fact, you can see the two, uh, the name of P.P. Uh, Lieber, that's Peter Paul Lieber. I have two sons, one is Peter and one is Paul. But anyway, Peter Lieber was the vice president, or the president, and Isaac Weil, who was the builder of our uh, house, uh, is, was the vice president. And, uh, but it also has a connection with another house that I want to talk about this evening. Um, I had a thought, I'm just trying to pull it out. Oh yes, uh, I did talk to a, I think it's a great grandson of Isaac Weil, uh, just this past week. And uh, I'm hoping that maybe he'll send me some pictures of it his great-grandfather. So his name was uh, uh, Smallwood. Is that right, Bruce? Little, 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 little. Little. Oh, little. Uh, The nickname that they gave when he was in school was Twig. <laughs> a piece of wood. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, one of Isaac Wilde's daughters married a little wood, and that little wood mill or factory mm -hmm. is still in operation down on uh, Main Street. Here's a picture of a trolley on Leverington. Uh, <clears throat> Leverington Avenue. And I didn't realize that there were trolleys at one time in this area. Maybe some of you uh, were aware of it. I'm not sure. Here's another picture. This is a picture that comes from that book. Uh, Sylvia is the one that let me see that picture. Uh, here's another picture. Uh, the word in the upper right there uh, is, I believe the word was Hicken. So there's a trawler coming out. I don't know if any recognize these storefronts. Um, and here's some more tracks uh, down there at Leverington and Baker Street. This is a picture of 1940. And presumably before the trolleys were these uh, horse pull trolley carts uh, in the city. And there's a picture that I got from Art Museum that sort of uh, gives you an idea of what they looked like before electrical trolleys. Uh, I took this picture. Uh, <clears throat> you can see trolley tracks right there as you enter into the Wissahickon train station. Uh, they're not in use, but uh, that's remnants of the old uh, trolley activity that used to come basically from Wissahickon and it would come across Manioc Avenue, turn right on Lyceum, and then I believe that it turned left on Mitchell. Uh, I know that also trolleys were along uh, the Ridge Avenue, uh, so 
So I'm not 100% sure uh, how it went across, but it went over to Leverington and then uh, uh, down Leverington at least for a, a, a time. I don't know how, uh, you know, presumably that one picture shows it getting down to Baker Street. And it went right past the Wild Mill there at Leverington and Wild Street. Again, uh, the uh, first owner of our house was the at one time the CEO of that mill uh, at Leverington and uh, Wild Street. There's another Wild Mill, I'm sure it's Lane or whatever, but I'm not sure that there's much right there. Right. <laughs> Maybe there is. So you would guess that there would be, oh, yeah. but uh, I just don't know. Here, here is a screenshot that I took from a trolley going along Ridge, uh, mm -hmm. right there, sort of as if you were standing on Gorgas Park, and it's uh, that's a later ran uh, trolley, of course. But uh, there was trolley activity in this area, uh, and uh, this this picture, uh, Sylvia also uh, got me. The, Got for me, and it's on Lyceum Avenue, presumably on Fourth of July Day or something like that. <clears throat> now, this is the one house that I want to talk about, 365 Green Lane, the Benjamin Kenworthy house. Prudence uh, and I had the opportunity to know uh, Jack and Billy Burgess, who were the previous owners of that house. Uh, Jack. Uh, played the or uh, taught organ lessons, piano lessons. Anybody here take any or no children that took lessons? My kids did. Okay. Uh, and uh, we moved into our house in '81, so we had an opportunity. We had them over Thanksgiving, and so on and so forth. And I had the privilege of actually officiating at uh, Mrs. Burgess's funeral not too long ago. But this is the Benjamin Kenworthy house. And uh, it's rather, uh, there's a lot of excitement in the community associated with the fact that the trees and shrubs and so on has been cut down, radiators have been taken out of the building, mm -hmm. and the new owner would like to essentially uh, destroy or demolish that house and put up some new structures. But there is significant opposition in the community. And so it seems like there's a possibility that this house will be, at least the exterior of it, preserved. And maybe another house sort of in the backyard, uh, a twin or something that is being contemplated. But different ones, different neighbors in the community. In fact, Prudence could say a lot more about that than I. But uh, Benjamin Kenworthy was also, I believe, one of the directors maybe of the Wizzahickon, uh uh, station, and he was also involved, perhaps, well, I'll just stop there. <laughs> now, here's another picture of, uh, you can get sort of a sweep of uh, some of the, we're standing sort of on Maniunk Avenue, and the cross street there is Maniunk, you've probably been there many times, and uh, 365 is on the left there. Our house is on the right behind that uh, blue spruce. And then there is a John Kenworthy house to the right of that, our house, which you can see the top part structure of that house. Uh, and uh, we'll have other pictures. But that's interesting to, to have a picture of the 365 house with the, with the trees <laughs> down and so on. <clears throat> now I believe that uh, Benjamin Kenworthy was <coughs> Perhaps even the founding director of the Manion Trust Company. Is that right, Bruno? He was a, I think he think he was a, a charter, charter director. A charter director. And maybe it was um, Graham uh, Littlewood that may have been the, the uh, director of it. I'm not sure. But there was a lot of interconnectedness in, uh, in previous history. Uh, here, this is a picture of the Wild Lieber House. Call it Wild Lieber because Wild was the first owner and Lieber was the second. And uh, they, they were vice president and president, respectfully, of the Wissahickon Trolley thing. 
And that's, this is right across the street from uh, Mrs. Burgess's house and Jack Burgess. Uh, and we were neighbors of them uh, for many years. And <clears throat> here's a uh, clipping from the Manium Sentinel. I'm not sure when the, that newspaper went out of business. But in the upper right corner, you can see a, an article which I've blown up on the left. It says, Death Removes Well-Known Man, Mr. Isaac Wilde. He was the councilman for the city, for this area, Broxboro, Maniac, and so on. Uh, and uh, so he was a uh, very, as it says, prominent manufacturer and a most energetic and influential councilman. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> Isaac Wilde uh, essentially became the owner of the uh, Wilde Mill there on Leverington and Wilde Street. Uh, here are different shots of it. Uh, in the middle of, on top, many of you probably have seen that many times coming up uh, Leverington. And uh, it's, it is still functioning. It's not a mill anymore, but there is a business. I think they're manufacturing some. Uh, products. <clears throat> and this, uh, on the upper right, you can see uh, the wording. This is actually a picture of, of one of the older uh, journals about mills and uh, fabrics and so on. And it says in the bottom there, Robert Wilde's son. And that would be Isaac Wilde. If you take a look at the bottom left, you'll see in the upper left corner that our ad the name Isaac Wilde, and it's Robert Wilde's son, carpet yarn manufacturer. And of course, this is another picture on the right of the, of the mill. So now you know a little bit about where that mill came from. <clears throat> uh, I think that pretty much I've uh, covered this, so we'll skip on to the next one. I want to say a little bit about uh, Peter Paul Liebert. I've had occasion uh, to email both, you know, maybe great grandsons. I'm, I'm not sure. I just forget how many greats. But uh, <clears throat> I think maybe one is a grandson and the other, or a great, I'm just not sure. But I've had occasion to communicate with Peter Paul Liebert, the fourth and the fifth. So I guess the fourth would give a clue. Let's see, uh, Junior would be the second, the third would, okay, so, um, you know, it's, in any case, this is a picture of the Lieber uh, tombstone uh, there in the cemetery, <coughs> and my son Peter are there, we took that picture. And on the, toward the center there, you actually see Peter P. Liebert's uh, gravestone. <clears throat> it's interesting that our house also was uh, owned at one time by the, sort of, the Episcopal Church. And during the Depression, uh, one of the, uh, a woman who inherited the house probably from her uh, parents who both died. Uh, and the Depression just wasn't able to keep things up or something. And so the Corporation for the Relief of the Widows and Children of the Clergymen to the communion of the Protestant Episcopal Church in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So that uh, uh, that book on the left there, where it says laparoscopic surgery of the abdomen, uh, Bruce McFadden was a medical doctor, and he rented the house. He didn't own the house, but he rented the house during the time that the uh, this corporation owned the house for about nine years. They owned the house. <clears throat> and then there was a dentist, Bernard Smith, who uh, lived in our house, and maybe some of you used to go. Anyone used to have Bernard Smith as a dentist? <laughs> I don't see any hand. But, uh, well, I, you know, it would be, you know, he, he was, uh, he owned it in 1963, so, uh, you know, that's, it's possible. Uh, that someone could have been involved in that. And this is some of his background. That uh, certificate that has his name on it, Peter and I were pulling out the old mantle 
because we wanted to put in a uh, masonry mantle in its place of the made of wood. And uh, that certificate was behind. So that's one way that I learned that he was uh, an owner. And I was able to do a little bit of research about him. Uh, getting back to the, uh, the uh, wild mill, <clears throat> this is a postcard of Maniunk. Uh, it's obviously goes back a while. And I went across uh, the river and actually took in the upper right hand corner a picture of the uh, wild mill, recent, fairly recently, a year or so ago. And uh, you can see that building right in the center of that postcard. It's uh, slightly to the left of a taller type of building that sort of recessed back. Now here's a map of the area. Notice the name in the upper left corner, uh, the southwest corner of the intersection of Maniunk and Green Lane. <clears throat> you can see the name Isaac Wild. And then beside uh, that house is one owned by John Kenworthy. Now there are, there's one person here that has some relationship uh, to the Kenworthy family. And uh, he's going to be particularly interested in the house on the other side of Green Lane, right there at the, the northwest corner. And I want to talk a little bit about that. But notice the Fairview Public School is right there in what we identify now as a parking lot, a public parking lot, and behind it near Dexter is the park. A lot of people with dogs love that park. They walk around and so on. Anybody ever been in that park? I've been in it, maybe okay, some hands. And it's a nice park. <clears throat> that uh, public school, that Fairview school, had its name changed to the Joel Cook School. And did anyone go to that school? Okay. Well, it burned down in the mid-70s, so it's conceivable. I, I suspect that just about everyone in this room except Peter, my son, was at least living in 1975. But um, there's a, another home there on Dexter and Green Lane. It has the name Baldy associated with it. And I'm not going to talk much about that man, but I am going to show you a 1923 uh, newspaper clipping when there was a bomb that exploded at that home. Oh, okay. And it's just interesting to reach back and realize that, uh, that in fact, this is it. The one picture on the left, <clears throat> the Baldy house, is one that I took. But you can see in 1923 how similar uh, the house uh, back then looked like. It's very, it's obviously the same house. And uh, apparently the bomb that exploded shattered windows, not only in that house, but in our house, which is three houses up uh, toward Mania. So that's sort of a point of interest. Here's a picture of the Cook or Fairview School. On the upper left, you can see it in the summertime. And the garage that you see in lower right of that picture is our garage. It was built in 1937, long after our house was built, which was in the year 1892. <clears throat> and I, uh, I'm just trying to, well, that's not. Here, here is the school on the right. Uh, after the, fl uh, the fire. And Millie Burgess is the one that let me have these pictures. And then the one in the lower uh, frame is the school in the wintertime. Again, you can see the parking lot, the, uh, uh, the garage there. Now this is an interesting picture, <clears throat> not only because it gives you a little configuration as to what our house looked like before there was a, a former house that was torn down and the 1892 house that Isaac Wilde built or had built uh, had a different configuration and <clears throat> but notice 
Uh, this perhaps is, uh, this, the dating of this map is maybe 1875, 1876, somewhere in there. But notice the name given to Green Lane, Belmont. So in 1875, 1876, when you come up Green Lane, you'd be coming up Belmont. And it makes sense, because on the other side of the river, it's known as Belmont. But that's, uh, that's interesting that uh, it was called, at least according to this map. <clears throat> now here's the Thomas uh, Kenworthy's house. Uh, my sister, who did the artwork for the trolley, is the one also who did the artwork for this uh, Thomas Kenworthy's house. Right on the northwest corner. In fact, <clears throat> if you take a look at the picture on the left, You'll see our house, but to the right, you, across the street, Green Lane, you can see the Thomas Kenworthy house. In the, in the same picture, again, this probably was taken by Mrs. Burgess, or, or her husband. So we, we have a person in this room that I think may be related somehow to the Thomas Kenworthy. In fact, he said something. Is it alright if I share what you told him? He said there's actually a tunnel from that house, the Thomas Kenworthy house, I just learned that this evening, <clears throat> that went to the house next door. They were both Kenworthy properties. Yeah, maybe I ought to go back to that picture and just see what the name is. Well, we can see Thomas Kenworthy, and while well, you do see S at the end and a Y, so maybe the next house was a D, a Kenworthy. I believe they were brothers. The tunnel went from one half to the other. Who there was a bit of ground. Prudence, did the brother of Thomas Kenworthy live next door to you? I, I believe so, but not in the house that's currently on that ground. The house that's currently on the ground it was built by a nephew in the 20s. Okay, and I that's, have a of that. That's the Edelman Kenworthy house. But, okay. but prior to that, I think, was a, there were two, a, two of the brothers, and they were brothers of Benjamin, who um, you know, lift cattle corner. Right. Okay, now on the opposite, we've talked about three corners on Green Lane and Maniac, and this is the fourth corner. And this is uh, the Samuel S. Keeley house, and this is a picture, I believe, of Samuel S. Keeley. This house was, I think I've got the uh, year in the next slide that it was constructed. Of course, <clears throat> That's not what it looks like today, although it is still in existence. But there are other, you know, more modern buildings, maybe three buildings or five, if you include uh, uh, DuPont Street. But uh, let's go to the next slide here. <clears throat> Here's an older picture, and it says that that house was completed about 1862. Samuel Keeley uh, lived between 1822 and 1899. Now this is an interesting picture from 1929, an aerial view. Notice in the top, upper left corner, you can see Roxborough High School. Oh, yeah. And a little bit below that, to the right, you can see the Salvation Army building. <laughs> and right in the middle of the picture, you can see the uh, Fairview uh, Cook School, uh, whether it was called, and maybe it was still called Fairview back in those days. <clears throat> but we've just talked about Samuel Keeley, and just above the roof of that school, slightly to the left, I believe you can see the Keeley home. So this is. Uh, now that home was in existence, and there are other homes to sort of to the left of the school that you can see, possibly the Baldy School, but I don't think you can see uh, our home, because it would be sort of like directly, maybe you can see a little piece of it, and also the Benjamin Kenworthy house on the right hand side, possibly, uh, you can see some of that. It's not overly distinct, but it's sort of cute to have that image. 
<clears throat> now the distinctive, this is the wild mill, and there's a connection with Samuel Keeley, who was a builder. That, do you see the uh, circular, semi-circular brickwork above the main window there? That was his sort of signature or distinctive, that that's what he would do. He would put frequently that kind of an arch. There's also an arch like that on the other side of the building. So there's a connection between the Keeleys, cat a corner from our house, and our house, in that Samuel S. Keeley actually presumably built the mill for Robert Wilde, and eventually the son inherited that will. There were two sons, but one died, so eventually it went to Isaac Wilde. Now this is uh, the house that's right next door to us. This is John Kenworthy's house. This is a picture that I took. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the person who lives next door to the right uh, owns a, hill, a house and lives there, but he recently purchased this house as well. And maybe some of you uh, know that person. I, I'm not going to. I don't think he's here tonight. I, he probably wouldn't object to my knowing it, but I might as well just not get into that detail. But we, uh, we, we know the family quite well, and they're quite concerned about what is happening to the 365 house, as well as any number of other <coughs> neighbors who have been meeting <coughs> uh, to try to work out a good solution, how to preserve that house uh, while make it possible for the developer to get some income from it. Now, uh, it's interesting that this is a picture of the house that Prudence was mentioning, the uh, Edelman Kenworthy house, built around the uh, 1920s. Uh, uh, Louise Fisher and Tony, uh, close friends of uh, ours, they are also, along with us, concerned what is happening to 365. And uh, uh, we, we really appreciate uh, those neighbors. But this picture of their house, which I sent to Louise, was actually taken from the roof of our house, which is right on the top. It's flat. And uh -huh. uh, it's not like peaked, you know, dangerous. What are you doing up there taking a picture? <laughs> it's quite, in fact, I had my mother who was, must have been in her 80s up there. So it's quite safe. You know, 4th of July, you can see different places where uh, the fireworks were going on. But it's interesting <clears throat> that this, uh, speaking about the roof of this house, because there's another picture from the roof that I'd like you to see this evening. And when you, this is another picture from the roof. And you can see the, perhaps you we say, Famous Manion Bridge. A lot of people, I remember when we went to a church service up in uh, in Ontario, Picton, Ontario, that thereabouts. There was, oh, do you live near that Manion Bridge? It's one of the most beautiful bridges. You know, I forget how she described it. This was many years ago. <clears throat> but, uh, and beyond that bridge, you can see the Schuylkill Expressway. Now, that expressway didn't used to be there. There was something that was there. What was it? Does anyone know what it was? Okay. What was that? I was just thinking. Well, yeah, trains uh, went through there and so on. So let's get some more pictures. Remember, from the top of our, it has a connection with the first two owners <laughs> of our house, Isaac Wilde and Peter Lieber. Yeah. What was going on down there? They were both involved in, so let me try to establish that. Here's a more recent picture. Notice, <clears throat> you only saw two bridges, uh, one bridge and that other. I mean, you saw the old Manhattan Bridge, but this isn't the Manhattan Bridge. Notice that that railroad bridge that you see, that's the one that you saw in that, well, actually, you saw this expressway, but there's another one where you, you won't even see the expressway but you'll see something there in its place. So what was it that was in its place? It was the Glen Willow Ice Company. Anybody ever hear of it? Okay. <clears throat> Notice, to the right 
there, there's that bridge that we associate with tracks. Notice the Schuylkill Expressway is not there. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, <laughs> this expressway goes right through this Glen Willow Ice Company <laughs> location. And that's right. That's why it's not there. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you can see a little bit of the uh, Schuylkill River there on the mm -hmm. lower right. And you can see the Manioc Bridge. Uh, but the, uh, the, t the, the second owner of our house at one point was president of Glen Willow Ice Company. And I believe that the other owner, the first owner, Isaac Wilde, was one of the directors. So there was a lot of interconnectedness in the community. Here's another older picture. Looking under that, what we would think of as a railroad bridge now. But notice, there's a street to the right. And you would associate that with the exit coming off the expressway. And everyone in this room has probably come off that exit to get on to Belmont. And then turned left and went under this bridge and the next one. <clears throat> so there is that. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. I was wrong. That street is still there. And it's, the, it's on this side of the bridge that the exit is. Uh, but before you get to the school, where's, I'm sort of, when I took this picture, I was standing under the expressway, more or less. So, now here's a picture of the Green Lane Bridge before the one that we knew. Uh, this picture is 1924. So, uh, I have some other pictures but this is the only one I put in uh, for this evening. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm almost finished, and after I finish, maybe we can have, uh, you know, a uh, question, Q&A or whatever, if you want. And if I can't answer it, maybe Prudence can. <laughs> so she's worked more with the neighbors than I have. But I do want to talk, this is a picture that Peter took of a rainbow on Maniunk Avenue in the talk this evening of the Maniunk Green Lane. <clears throat> and that's an interesting picture. And we're talking history, and I asked someone, you know, do you deal with history that's beyond, you know, Roxborough, Wissick, and Maniunk, and, you know, if there's some connection. Well, here's the connection, a rainbow on, on Maniunk Avenue. And you say, well, how come you have University of Pennsylvania down there in 4,500 years ago? Boy, that goes back a long time. Did you hear the, <clears throat> the um, about this is sort of a joke. So if I, you can laugh courteously even if you don't get it. But the, uh, the wife was complaining about her husband. And it relates to, to the word on this slide. Uh, maybe talking to a counselor or something, and she said, he, he, when I talk to him, he gets so historical. <laughs> <laughs> and the counselor said, well, you mean hysterical, don't you? And she said, no, I mean historical. I have to learn a lesson of history every time we get into an argument. He repeats the same old thing over and over. <laughs> anyway, chalk that up for a little bit of a, uh, what was the Shakespeare's phrase? Comic relief, I guess. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I had the privilege of holding a very ancient uh, Acadian tavern uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. I had lunch with one of the professors, a seriologist, professor or whatever, and he allowed me to hold this. Here's a blow-up of it on the right-hand side. And that has a connection with the rainbow that you saw in Maniac Avenue. He wrote a book, and it's called, and I'll read the title, The Earliest Version of the Babylonian Deluge Story and the Temple Library of the Poor, 1910. He was a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. I have that book, booklet, and it's very interesting to read. And notice the land formation. Uh, you know, we talk about layers and millions of years and so on. 
But that looks like something like you see when you're stirring up pudding, you know. But this is like pudding on a huge scale. A uh, soft, malleable sediment. So, uh, and here's a picture from Utah of uh, a layer of coal. You can see it's dark. And the layer